Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to jump out here, take advantage of this little bit of sunshine we're having here between the rainstorms, and take a look at the gardens. We'll see how they've grown and see how they've changed. But uh, we've had some good rain, so hang around till after the break. I'll show you what the plants have done with it. Alright guys, we're going to get out here and uh, take a look around the gardens. We'll start over at the main garden where we usually do. But uh, we've had a lot of rain lately, so the plants are coming up. They're looking really good. Uh, we're getting ready to start doing some serious harvesting. And uh, that's always a fun time of year where uh, you'll see us making some canning videos. We'll do a little cooking. And uh, um, just in general, we'll show you how to how to put up your uh, put up your gardens to use them later during the winter months and stuff. So. We'll fire up the dehydrator, you just never know. So guys, we're gonna get out here, we'll take a look at the main garden, then we'll slide over to the slide over to the raised bed garden where I am now. And uh, we'll hit the sweet corn, which is right behind me there somewhere. But uh, you guys enjoy the video, we'll take a look at this footage and uh, we'll just get going. All right guys, we're over here at the main garden, which is usually where we start, but I'll show you down here the broccoli is still hanging in there we haven't had it bolting too bad but uh, we've been able to catch what heads have come off of it so far before they bolted and we'll be able to use those the cabbage back in there behind the broccoli is doing really really well we've got several heads back there I'd say 30 36 plants somewhere in there but I'm bringing up here the little peppers are doing well they're starting to get small peppers on them but they're all uh, they're all doing good. We've uh, got a few down there. Some new ones down on the end of the row. Those are going to be poblano peppers. And then we cleaned up the end of that row down there. Um, the hollow spot you see there in the center. We're going to be doing some more planting down there. But we got the sea of beans here. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rows of beans. That you can, they're all starting to grow together. Hopefully you can see that they're starting to flower out. They're going to start putting on beans here soon. If we get over here, these are just regular green and wax beans. And over here we got the half runner beans and you can see that they've started to put on some vines. So they won't be as bad as runner beans, but they are half runner beans, so they'll get some vines on them. But I'm not going to be able to walk down through the middle of the garden like we usually do. Let's see, we got these peppers here growing along the beans. And at the very end of that pepper row where it greens up there, there's some squash back there. I'll try to get you another shot of those here in a minute. But uh, we'll walk back here towards the back of the main garden and take a look at what's going on back there. And uh, we'll take a look over here. We got uh, we got the onions are still haven't come out yet. We've got them laid down, but uh, we got to get these out of here. It's been just wet. We want it to be nice and dry when we harvest our onions. And when we harvest our garlic, we want about three good sunny days in a row so they can dry out good and that'll save us a lot of loss from uh, rotten stuff once we pull them but we got our volunteer acorn squash here they've got squash on them about the size of golf balls kind of hard to see but they uh, got the pepper or the potatoes growing here out of the potato buckets and uh, they're starting to die back just a little bit which is a good thing that means they're almost done so we've been keeping an eye on them pretty good Got a little bit of insect damage, but nothing too severe. There's those acorn squash again. They're just volunteers from last year. We grew acorn squash right here in this corner, if you remember. Got some more onions down through here. They are just about spent. They just need pulled. Take a look out here across the sea of beans again. I don't know if you can see right on the back edge of those beans, the squash leaves just lipping up above the beans. Hey, walk down here. These are this year's acorn squash that are starting to run out here into the yard. They got lots of blooms down through there. So we're looking forward to a good, good crop out of those. We always enjoy acorn squash is one of our favorites. Here's the Central and South American corn. It is getting up really high, so. We're glad to see that. It's not showing any signs of tasseling or anything. It's a pretty tall corn. 
but uh, we're just looking forward to uh, seeing how it produces and we'll uh, dry some out we'll check it make sure it grinds well before we introduce it with our hybrid corn project but so far it's looking good swing around here there's Tina's African gourds everybody is always a uh, excited to see those she's going to do some crafting on those this winter a lot of people have asked what she does with them she likes to use a dremel and um, carve them up a little bit she's made jewelry boxes and candle holders and all kinds of things out of them so she's got some little electric candles make it a little bit safer to burn in the gorge but leaves on around through here the peanuts are doing really really well in the raised little raised bed we put there there's going to be a lot of peanuts in that little spot like I told you last time the peanuts grow up and then they send a tendril down to the surface of the ground and uh, that tendril will go down below the surface and that's a, a peanut will form on the end of each one of those so peanuts grow up then they go back down in the soil and that's where your peanuts come from but our little watermelon here off the end are doing really good they'll run out here see the creek is right back here I think I've shown you guys that before but they've got about 15 feet or so they can run out there we'll pick up the end of the cabbage row there and onto the broccoli but guys this is the main garden here right up there off the top right corner of the peanuts that's that squash I keep talking about it's just yellow summer squash but uh, we're looking forward to getting it on so all right guys that's the main garden give you a little perspective where there's the house there's the chicken coops and we're gonna head right up there in the middle to the raised bed garden next. Alrighty guys, we're gonna start on the back, what would be the back right corner of the raised bed garden with the cherry tomato. You guys have seen that. And there's the Brussels sprouts and stuff. They've got the cherry tomato starts up underneath them and we still have yet to get this lettuce up out of here. So we need to fetch that out of there. So it'll, uh, it's already gone to head. We can go ahead and make use of it now and uh, the outside leaves are starting to spoil so we need to get it up out of here we've got some uh, pepper plants growing here in the pot we still have not pulled our garlic i know i told you we were going to pull it in the last video but we haven't had the dry weather that we need to get it out of the ground so hopefully uh, it'll dry up here in the next week or so and the first opportunity we get we'll snatch it up out of here this is our uh, this is our soft nut garlic here it's obviously ready to come out Here's our hard neck garlic. It's got a few little scapes left on it. Never seen a garlic scape. That's a garlic scape. And if you cut them when they first come up, they're still tender and you can fry them. Here's another look at one. You can fry them in butter and some little garlic salt or onion salt, whatever you prefer. And uh, they're really good. But those are some onion scapes or some uh, garlic scapes if you've never seen those. Let's see, the peas are out of this bed. And we have planted Roma tomato plants in here, and there are a bunch of them. So this is just going to be a bush of Roma tomatoes. Uh, we'll tie them off to that center stake. The, the wire that's up around them, that's our pea wire. Um, probably not going to do much good for staking tomatoes, but we left it in there just for a little extra support as they grow. Right, we'll go on down here. We got peas that are uh, needing their last picking. We did a pretty hard pick on them. They've maybe got one last pick left on them. But you're going to see those disappear here before too long. The globe onions are still in the ground against my uh, wishes. We should have got those out of there when we had the chance, but we'll need to get those next time it dries out too. Um, this bed here, or these two beds with the globe onions, we'll spin around back here and the two beds back here with the garlic on them will all be onions. I've already got them in. Those will all be a yellow Vidalia onion. And uh, these up here will be a split of another yellow we're going to try out and red onions. So I've got the boxes full of onion starts in on the table and uh, they're ready to plant. We just got to get these out of the way. So we've got our uh, broccoli and cabbage going good up here. We're uh, real happy with how they're doing. Got some more over there. Got a little bit of leaf damage there, but can live with that. The head's still good. Let's see, the beets are really doing solid down through there. All right, let me back up here just a little bit. These are the these are the boxes here between the outsides. They have the um, 
the bot peppers and the peppers we raised from seeds. Let's see, something new you haven't seen yet. They've got little onions growing all the way around the outside of them. That's going to be that way on all of the pepper boxes. They're all already done, but there's my little hot peppers. But we've got onions planted all the way around the boxes. Now these are just uh, onion starts or uh, little bulbs that uh, they'll just produce small onions. We'll probably use the tops more than we do the onions. Cut those into chives and dry them. But uh, we got some in planted in there and uh, they were left over from a little project over here. Again, there's the beets. These are the broccoli and underneath the broccoli are yellow onions planted all through them. So we were afraid this broccoli was going to bolt before it had a chance to mature. So we went ahead and planted this bed in onions so that if I've got to cut these broccoli out of here, the onions will already have a head start. So we got that done. Let's see, there's a little, that's some dill. We grew dill in that box there last year. Some of the seeds fell off in this box and volunteered. So we're just letting them grow. If you see the little fuzzy dill plants down in there, they're uh, just volunteers. If they can make it, we'll let them grow. So here's some peas. These are the younger peas. They need picked, but uh, got a bunch of them on there. This rain will really swell them up. That's a good time to go ahead and go on and pick them. So we're going to let this rain. Let's see, they run on up this trellis. They're about as tall as I am. But uh, good time to get these peas out of here. We got some more over here and they are just as full. It loaded down with some good looking peas. So we're glad to have them, but we need to get them picked and out of here. Let's see, swing around here, take a look at the peppers again. There's some good ones. You can see the water standing in the corner of that bed. That's a, that is a lot of rain we've had lately. So get you a look at those. These right here are the, um, against the, let's see, here's the inside edge and the outside edge. Down the edges are Roma tomatoes and through the middle are some yellow cherry tomatoes. So Tina's been uh, keeping an eye on them. In this box we got our, uh, we got our cantaloupes and our, our watermelon. You can see the cantaloupes blooming. The yellow blooms all over them. May do a little bit better on cantaloupes this year than we do watermelon. The watermelons are having a little trouble what looks like weeds in here are actually ground cherries. And uh, last year the watermelon didn't have any trouble competing with them, but this year we may have to cut some of these ground cherries back. So we've got other watermelon growing in another place, so not sure how much we'll cut it back. The cantaloupe don't seem to be having any trouble with it. So I'm not sure exactly what we'll do. Just follow along and uh, we'll be glad to show you when we do decide. But here's some more peppers. And in this last bed, we have got more Roma tomatoes. So I'll show you where we keep getting these Roma tomato plants from. There's some seeds we started a while back. But uh, we're going to turn this into a Roma shred too. With, uh, like I said, with the new uh, tariffs and stuff going on, um, hard to tell what food prices are going to do. So we want to make sure that we have plenty of tomatoes here on the homestead. It's one of the main things we use. So, you know, any chance we get, we're going to plug in some more. So we don't mind having a these are small, but they'll just be late season tomatoes. We still go, we have a long growing season here in Tennessee and plenty of time to get them up grown and get them harvested yet this year. So not a problem there, but let's head over to the sweet corn. Let's we'll see how that's doing. Then we'll take a look at some other things. All right, guys, we're over here beside the chicken coop and I uh, wanted to show you these. These are some uh, pumpkins we got growing here in these pots. They, uh, take water right off the drip edge of the of the roof here of the chicken house so they usually do pretty well but uh got some pumpkins growing in there i usually don't uh usually don't get those when i do my little walk around videos so thought you guys might enjoy seeing that we're kind of back here we're by the crazy turtles but i'll take you over by the other chicken house and uh, show you there's some more pots over there I'll show you something we uh, probably haven't shown you either so these are our pumpkins and i'll be right back to show you something different all right, guys, in these three pots, we're over here at the other chicken house. But uh, in these three pots, we got our Kushaw melons. And uh, you guys saw those, we grew those for the first time last year, and uh, they did really, really well for us. We got the seeds from uh, old James over at the old school with a modern twist channel. Get a chance to go over there and check him and his wife Buster out. But uh, 
Well, James sent us some seeds for some Kushaw melons, and uh, we had one last year run about 20 pounds. So, you guys, uh, check that out. That's in our cooking and canning videos in our playlist there. But there's the Kushaw melons. They're doing well. And uh, we'll get over here and let's see. I'm just spinning around, and give you some perspective. I keep spinning you. Sorry about that. This is the end of the. This is the end of the raised bed garden. We're down here at the sweet corn, and we are at the far end of the sweet corn. So, this here is the hybrid corn. Let's see if you can see the step off right there. The height difference between the hybrid corn on the right and the sweet corn on the left. Now the sweet corn's been uh, growing like crazy, so it's trying to catch back up. But this is our hybrid corn, and uh, we're real happy with it. It doesn't get shorter. The ground actually dips down there. So <laughs> if I tilt the camera, it'll <laughs> get right way. But uh, we got our squash down through here. They run all the way down the front of this garden. And uh, we're getting ready to probably have to start picking on them. They got some little three and four inch squash on them now. So a day or two from now, they'll be ready to pick. But, Sweet corn is coming along strong. We're real happy with it. We usually have a real nice uh, sweet corn crop. It's getting about 18 inches tall, and that'll be the, the one time that we weed it. We feed sweet corn three times while it's growing. We feed it once before we plant it. We'll feed it once when it's about 18 inches tall. That's when it gets its only weeding. And then we'll feed it again when we see the first tassels on the top. So that'll help with ear development. But we just put straight nitrogen on it. Um, usually 3400 and uh, for a patch this size it'd take about a 50 pound bag so that's a lot of nitrogen but uh, the corn can take it and if you see you're starting to burn your corn you can always overwater it a little but that's how the corn's doing we'll ease around here take a look at some other things but the squash and corn are doing well all right guys we're just going to take a little stroll down through here see the strawberries and there's some basil coming on more strawberries more unknown herbs i'll have to get with teen i really need to give you guys an answer on what these herbs are but uh, some extra sweet potato slips more unknown herbs more sweet potatoes pickling cucumbers they are doing really well we're really glad to see them those are nice thick old leathery leaves on them and that's what we like to see just big healthy plants the carrots are getting bigger and bigger all the time you can see the tops are just nice and healthy and real dark green so they're doing well got some more pickling cucumbers here we got what's left of the carrots in this box poor things they uh they survive being dug up when we found a snake digging around in this dirt and we had to flush a snake out of here but uh, what what seedings did survive we went ahead and let them grow but that box there will probably have a couple hundred carrots in it and uh, this one here will just get what we get and be happy for them so that's the that's the old wood boxes these are our original raised buds that we started with uh, they've been around here the longest and they've held up held up really really well so glad to have them they've produced a lot of food for us but what I'll show you next when we get over here are the tomato plants. Now these things were little sticks when I showed them to you not a week ago. But uh, they are coming on strong and uh, we're real happy for it. We used our, um, our tomato patch here. We plant the same holes every year except we clean the dirt out of them and replace it with the super soil. So they are dug down about two feet deep and about 10 inches around. So we dig that dirt back out and uh, we fill it full of super soil and then we plant our tomatoes. So you can see in the change, if you uh, if you were watching a week ago, they weren't a third this size. So they are filling out nicely. They're staying good and low. We don't want them to run up too tall real fast and get leggy. So we're nice and we're glad that they're getting thick and staying low. And uh, they got all year to get to the tops of the posts. And by the end of the year, you won't hardly be able to see the whites on the posts. So we're just glad for the good strong growth early on and that'll give us a good crop later coming down the road so well he's over here take a look at the asparagus it is doing well we're letting these ferns grow they'll uh, they'll feed the new crowns but we've got some seed in there and we've got some crowns planted and we need to continue filling these boxes so 
it's just a process. We got to let these ferns grow up some, then we'll fill it up some more. So we've got one video on doing a little filling already, but we'll get them filled most of the way to the top. We'll add more seeds and maybe some more crowns as we go. But uh, when she's all done, she ought to be a real good producer here in a couple of years. So that's the asparagus bed. I got one more surprise for you guys. All right, guys, we're over here by the sweet potatoes. I give you a look. The chickens are out here running around. Let's just take a quick look around. Back there behind all the trees and stuff, that's Tina's shop. I don't even know if I can get that through the trees, but Tina's got her shop back there. Um, some of you have asked about the baskets that hang on the post. Guys, those are nesting boxes, but they're just plastic. In fact, uh, let's just for one video, we'll walk back here and get it out of the way and show you. They're nice plastic boxes. When they're set upright, they sit like this, and they have a dent opening in them so the chickens can get in and out real easy. I hope nobody got dizzy there, but they've got uh, they've got boxes in there. There's the back door to the coop, and that's why these are out here right behind the coop so we can use them. But um, they've got ones in there, and uh, we bring the spares out here, spray them off with a hose, and throw them over the tops of these posts, and uh, let them dry. I don't think I've ever showed you guys over here this, but let's see, we got our, uh, oh, what are these? These are uh, muscadines, I believe. Got some muscadines started there. I think she was leaving the rest of these posts for uh, scuppernongs, but uh, we'll go ahead and get those planted in too. They can take this over. They're just some old posts that we uh, repurposed and uh, had some old barbed wire decorated it up with. Set it over here by the grape arbor. So you guys have seen that grape arbor before. But we'll head back over here. Like I said, just wanted to give you guys a look around, take a, take a look back here across the pond, and take a look out here at the orchard. Always so pretty out here. I really do need to just slow down and take a look at some stuff. But uh, getting back over here to the sweet potatoes, and I've got a surprise for you. Miss T for her birthday has asked for a second planter. So now we have two of them. If you want to see how this one started its life before it was painted and stuff, it was a giant galvanized eight foot planter. So I've got some photographs. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these in here real quick and I'll be right back. Alright guys, that was hauling it home in the truck, which was a joy. It's always a, always a trick to uh, take something that's basically a giant wind sail, put it in the back of your truck and see if you can get it home. So we tested all my Boy Scout knots and uh, they survived. So guys, this is Tina's new planter. You can see it's got water in it already. I'm going to ease around here. Let's see, keep doing everything I can to make you guys dizzy. But right down there is the drain plug. And uh, we'll go ahead and pull that plug out of here. And as you can see, the water has all pooled to this side, which is kind of the same as the case here. I don't know if you can see where that one drains. But we'll turn that plug around over to this side so that it'll drain and we'll put some rocks there so that the water can get out. The dirt won't plug it up. The water can get out and the critters can't get in. So we'll put a bunch of rocks inside there and then we'll bury them. Uh, we'll show you guys filling how we set these up, but uh, and then how we uh, fill it from there. It's a country line or county line. But uh, this one here we got for a steel because somebody had dented it with a forklift. But this was a birthday present. Um, we run about $3.99 and uh, because we're agricultural out here, we're uh, tax exempt. So um, just a straight $3.99 from TSC guys are interested in those but we'll get up here and uh, wish well we'll take a look at these uh, one last look at the at the sweet potatoes here the vines sorry it's a uh, it's done nothing but rain and it's muggy and my lungs hate it so 
just have to catch my breath every once in a while, but they uh, got these sweet potatoes going on here. They're real happy about it. Now, we'll head back up and uh, we'll talk to you in just a second. All right, guys, real quick, before we get you guys out of here, I just wanted to show you, these are some uh, Roma tomatoes that we started from seed. And I believe there's uh, 72 holes in each one of these containers. So there's probably close to 200 tomatoes there in that little tiny spot. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna find a place and try to plug in as many as we can. And uh, this is gonna be a year where we have to deal with the tomatoes and an excess of them. But we have plenty of canning jars. We own a few thousand, so <laughs> hate to even guess how many we own. But we'll be able to put them up. We just uh, they hate to throw these seedlings away, so we're going to find them a home. They'll be late season tomatoes for us, but we'll be glad to have them. And uh, got to find a home for that lonely pumpkin plant over there, too. He's uh, just doing his own thing, but uh, we'll find him a home here before too long. But these are the Roma tomatoes. They're still doing good, and uh, we'll get over here and wish you well. All right, guys, that's about going to wrap it up for our garden tour today. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We've had a good time just taking you around and uh, showing you how things are going. We're getting a little behind. The rain's got us to where we need to get this garlic and stuff out of the way, get these onions done. And uh, we've got uh, some things that'll be coming out of the garden. We have more planting yet to do. You'll see uh, kind of as we go along, you'll see that we have one thing starting up as another thing shutting down. So that's, that's just the way it happens here. We've got to get as much food production out of the square footage that we use as we can. There's some people that'll tell you you need great big gardens and you got to have huge boxes and stuff like that. And that might be the case if you're doing a single planting or you have a short growing season, but we have a nice long growing season here in Tennessee. We can almost grow sweet corn and uh, pick it off, plant it again, and get it all the way through done again. So we've done that a couple of years. We may even try to do it this year. We've got some shorter shorter day corn we may plug in there you may see us take two crops off the same spot so anyway you guys we we enjoy you guys coming by the homestead and uh, we like making these videos we enjoy your questions and stuff if you do have questions or comments please leave those down below and uh, if you would if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and uh what other thing we like to do is we like to throw some support out there for some smaller channels that are doing good things it's a uh, um, we were a little bit smaller and we got a lot of help from uh, like channels like the Keeping It Dutch channel, our friend Dutch over there, and a big props to him. He has been a real blessing to our channel. But uh, we're going to go ahead and pay a little bit of that forward if you would. If you're still around here at the end of the video, I'd like you to do me a favor. You guys are the loyalists that stick around to the end, so you'll be the best ones I can send over there. Um, we've got a friend. His name is Eric Williams. He is an urban or suburban homesteader and uh, he has a gardening channel called the green thumb gardening channel and uh, I'm gonna put a link for it up here in the corner um, Eric's got some great great things going on it's obvious that he knows what he's talking about and we love finding these smaller channels where uh, where people that people that know what they know what they're doing are out there trying to share what they know they just don't have a big enough audience yet so you guys are the ones that can do something about that um, if you would, I'm going to put that link up here. If you guys go over and tell Eric that a Bumblebee Junction sent you and uh, check out some of the things he's got going on. I know he's growing some sweet potatoes over there. And uh, he was had to put out a video the other day. He was harvesting some flower seeds and they were able to, they're actually able to plant those back again this year. And uh, they'll be, um, you know, getting a second harvest of flowers or a second harvest of enjoyment out of his flowers. But uh, Eric's over there trying to do some good stuff, guys. If you'd go over there and uh, just tell him we said hello, throw him a little support, watch a few of his videos, you know, hit that thumbs up button for him, and uh, just let him know it's worth his time and his effort to share what he knows. Because we haven't, uh, we've just barely touched on what he's been able to share so far, and it's good information. So we have no doubts about it. We uh, we have no doubts about uh, recommending him, and. Uh, We'd appreciate it if you'd go over there and, and show him a little bit of love. So, Eric, buddy, I hope this helps you out, and I uh, hope you guys will get over there and, and uh, show Eric some love. But uh, we're going to let you go. One more thing, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Down next to there is a bell, if you ring that bell. That'll send you a notification whenever we put out new videos. That's a great way to keep up with the channel. But we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please go over there and show Eric some love. We'll catch you guys in the next one.